Mm, my evilness, this is a good book. The Werewolf Guide to Life. Hmm. And, and I think a lot of us can use a book like this, especially my friend here, uh, Larry. <laughs> <laughs> he he's seen better days it would seem but anyway we still love to keep him around the museum kind of show younger werewolves well what not to do you know be very careful of silver handled canes i mean this this is really a good book in fact it tells from every stage of being a werewolf it, it even says right here stage five age of uh a werewolf more than 50 years is considered to be an elder of lycanthropy. Lycanthropy. That's a very hard word to say when you have a lisp, isn't it? <laughs> but Boris Karloff didn't seem to, to, to mind. Uh, no one minded about his lisp either. <laughs> Had such a wonderful English-British accent. <laughs> anyway, so that would be, make me an elder of the uh, werewolf clan. Oh my, well, maybe I'm telling my age. <laughs> anyway, welcome everyone. Welcome to Gargoyle Manor, the Monster Museum. I am your creepy old curator and your host of Monster Movie Night. <laughs> welcome one and all. We have a treat not just a trick but a treat in store for each and every one of you again this very evening that's right as if you have not uh, surmised so far it is another wonderful film about lycanthropy or the wolf the werewolf wolfman or thereabouts <laughs> in fact Dear kitties and fiends of the night, tonight's feature is called The Boy Who Cried Werewolf. <laughs> I mean, after all, little tykes, you know, they have such active imaginations, right? I mean, they say, oh, there's a monster under my bed. The parents say, oh, no, no, little Timmy, there's no monster under your bed. Go back to sleep. <laughs> well, little Timmy, there are monsters under your bed, but don't be afraid. They're not always out to get you. However, tonight's feature, terror tale of werewolfism, is a, well, this is about a kid and his dad. Mm -hmm. Going camping in the woods. What could ever go wrong with that? Hmm? <laughs> well, let's tune in and find out. Tuning in, that is, with the old um, internet haunted television. First, I've got to key it in with the haunted typewriter keyboard. That is the boy who cried werewolf. It's also starring Kerwin Matthews. So let's go tune it in right here now. <laughs> yeah, you're wrong to tell you not to turn on the TV at night. How dare you? Ah! <laughs> I've been watching you.
get the groceries, Dad. Okay. Coming, Rich? Right there. chance of you and Mom ever getting together again? Oh, Rich, we have been all through that. Start a fire, huh? Yes. You used to love each other. Well, things are different now, Richie. We just feel it's better if we live apart. I guess it was kind of an impossible situation. Always fighting all the time. I know. I used to listen. Well, that was one of the reasons. But there are other things that you just don't understand. You know, it doesn't change Mom's or my love for you. I know, Dad. I understand. It's just that... I keep remembering of the way we used to be. That's all. You know, Rich, you are the single blessing in my life. Now, how about a walk in the woods to work up our appetite, huh? For a TV dinner? No, for a dinner in town. Hooray! How about a steak tonight? A hamburger for me. Oh, hamburger it is. And french fries? And french fries. Hey, Richie, come on. Okay, Dad. Ah! <laughs> 
Sheriff, it attacked us. It came right out of the woods. Oh, you should have seen it. It was gigantic. It grabbed me, and my dad hit it over the hill with that cane. Over and over. Rich, and... rich, rich. Well, I was just telling the sheriff about the werewolf. Well, see where the werewolf bit his arm, Sheriff? Oh, rich, that's enough. Well, your boy has quite an imagination, hasn't he? This is your cane, isn't it, Mr. Bridgestone? Yes, it is. When you get the feeling a little better, I'd like you to come down to the office and tell us all about it. Well, I only wish there was something I could tell you, sir. What I saw up there, it was obviously self-defense. But the man, what about him? Who was he? We can't get a make on him. No clothing labels, no fingerprints on file, no ID, no car, nothing. What makes it even more cockeyed? His blood doesn't fit any blood type known. Now, I thought maybe you could shed some light on who he was. Beats me, Sheriff. Well, I couldn't see very well. I had all I could do to fight him off. This is the way you did it, honey. Whack! 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 Yeah, stop it, son. Killing isn't funny. It was a monster, Sheriff. Honest. Wasn't it, Dad? You saw it? Oh, Rich, stop this monster nonsense. I'll have to have this at the inquest. Oh, gee, I wanted to show it to my friends. Well, supposing I run into a werewolf. I've got to have some protection, too, right? I'll see you at the office. I'll get my stuff, Dad. something. Honestly, I never intended to, well, have it all turn out the way it did. If they did what was right, I would have done the same thing. Maybe if I followed your suggestion and joined you two at the cabin, all this wouldn't have happened. No, yeah, but you were working. Coming genius of the publishing world. That's a little far-fetched. Well, that's why you're my ex-wife, remember? Women of the world unite and all that garbage. Well, your chauvinistic brain is still functioning, so I know you weren't hitting the head. Of all the women in the world who used to fight over me, I picked not only a beauty, but a senior partner as well. I guess you could describe it as a spooky marriage, but uh, we've got a heck of a divorce. Did you hear about the werewolf? It was like this. And then Dad hit it. Whack! Whack! Did Dad tell you? Well, not exactly in that way. Well, it was a werewolf. Well, kiss Daddy and get thee to bed, little monster. Hey, you gonna spend the night, Dad? Yeah, I'd sure like to. Well, how about it, Mom? Please, Mom. Come on, Hop. 
Mark Sharp. Really got to get back to my apartment. No, I've got a tough day tomorrow, so let's get you to bed, huh? I love you, Dad. I know, Rich. And I love you, too. And good night. Good night. I'm getting a little jealous. All that love and affection. There's a lot more where that came from. Robert, I, I really have to go to bed, too. Yes, I know. Your work is very time-consuming. I have time for other things. Like what? Like taking care of our son. Yes, you've done okay with him, Sandy. You really have. You've always been a very good mother. But a lousy wife. Oh. Well, speaking of our son, Robert, Dr. Martyrosian would like to see you. What does the good psychiatrist have to say about him? Well, the doctor thinks he's really doing quite well, but he wishes Richie wouldn't carry on, so when you come over, then don't stay. Look, I would be very happy to stay. He thinks this experience at the cabin might set him back in his analysis. It's only an hour of your time. It's only an hour of your time to see the psychiatrist. Good night, Robert. Good night. It's not a new phenomenon, Mr. Bridgestone. Devils, witches, werewolves have been with us throughout the ages. I'm a profound believer in the fact that children do actually see monsters. Doctor, you can't be serious. But I am. Doctor, that was no monster I killed out there. That was a man. But your son cannot equate with your killing a man, so the man becomes a monster, and you, St. George, slaying the dragon. It really was a monster, in his eyes. He really believes it. Then what do you suggest that we do about that? Take him back up to the mountains and show him that the place where you both had this experience is a real place. And the werewolf business, that'll disappear? Possibly. Would it be a good idea if my ex-wife, his mother, went with us, if she's willing? Not this time. Take him back up, as you've been doing. Once he gets over his werewolf fixation, then take your wife. Show him that just because you're not living together doesn't mean you cannot be together on occasion. Thank you, Doctor. I'll take your advice. Oh, by the way, you realize I'll have to charge you, just as in the case of a patient. You want to check now? It'll wait. Thank you. stuck through the heart with that road sign. Hmm? Because there's only three ways that you can kill a werewolf. Oh. By being stuck through the heart, or by being bashed through the head with something made of silver, or with wolf bane. Oh, that's a mysterious plant that suffocates werewolves, and it only blooms in the full moon. <laughs> okay, expert. Be sure to check our barbecue area for mysterious plants, because we don't want to suffocate, do we? Are we going to have a cookout tonight? Well, if you can provide us with enough fresh fish, yes, we are. Hooray! I'll catch all the fish we can eat. Maybe more. What's that, Dad? Well, it looks like a commune of some kind. Can we stop? Stop or fish? It's up to you. Can we stop next time? Okay, that's a promise.
Howdy, sir. It's only the Bible, Sheriff. Thanks. Oh, what the hell is this? It's a cross, man. I know it's a cross. Just a cross, but protection. Protection on this heavenly hell call the earth. Protection from Satan. Protection for all people. Protection from evil. It reminds us of the Lord. It tells it like it is. If you listen, man. Well, now you listen, man, and I'll tell it like it is. Now, you take that cross and all your people out of here. Don't you people know you have no right of assembly without a permit? You know what this is, Sheriff? Yes, I know what this is. Now, how long you, uh, people planning on staying up here? Forever. Reincarnation, man. That's where it's at. Many mansions right here in these mountains. Give me my staff. Prayer meeting. Prayer meeting, Sheriff. Tonight's the night. Maybe God's gonna do something for you tonight. You believe it? Hell Hell it. Oh, Lord. Dramatists, writers, folk singers, young revolutionaries keep howling that man is sick, that God is dead. Is that so? No! Care to join us, Sheriff? God is not dead. If that were true, then there would be danger everywhere. No woods to roam. No outer space to go out to. Hey, ma'am. God is not dead. Man is not sick. Because my people are alive. Okay. Right on, you right. are alive. Yeah. Yeah. Up on life and save. Hell of a now listen, you freaks. This is a forest area. No cutting of trees, and be careful of your campfire. No, uh, no smoking. You call us freaks? We're not freak freaks. We're freaked out, man. Freaked out on God. Hey! Welcome back, horror fans, to the Weird Kid Horror Show. I am your host, the Weird Kid. And today is the first interview for the new horror host segment of the Weird Kid Show. Like I said in previous videos, when I was a kid growing up, Channel 56 out of Boston had a show called Creature Double Feature. And it showed two back-to-back -back horror films. And that's where I was exposed and molded and corrupted, if you will, into the person I am today. I was exposed to the Universal Monsters, the Hammer Horror movies, the Godzilla movies, 
um, the B movies, the atomic age horror movies, everything, I watched it all and I couldn't get enough of it. I didn't know what I was missing though because I was reading in Famous Monsters of Filmlands about horror hosts and I didn't understand it because we didn't have one. It wasn't until I moved to Florida where I discovered Dr. Paul Bear. And I absolutely fell in love with the guy. He was fantastic. Like I said before, he had a glass eye. And, and it looked like one was going this way and the other one was on the viewer. He did skits. He had comedy, props, guests. And then, of course, the movies. He would introduce the movies. Really good stuff. And then, eventually, of course, there was Joe Bob Briggs from Monster Vision on TNT. And everyone knows Elvira. But, see, I didn't know how much horror hosting was ingrained in pop culture. Because horror hosting goes way back into the 50s. And there was a certain point in time in history where there was near enough a horror host in every network across the nation. It seemed to have died down, but thanks to the internet, there is a new revival. And I want to introduce to you and bring to you these four hosts across our great nation. Starting with Bobby Gamonster from Monster Movie Night. Now Bobby Gamonster is not your typical four host. He also runs and owns Gargoyle Manor in Virginia, a monster museum that you, you yourself can visit. So without further ado, I would like to introduce you to Bobby the Monster from Monster Movie Night. You coming, Dad? Uh, yeah, you you go ahead. Uh, I'll meet you down there. Okay. As soon as I. Don't forget the net, Dad.
happy? Thirsty. Black coffee for you. And milk for me. Everybody needs milk except yours. And how is that? You know how it puts you to sleep. You want to drink this or wear it? <sighs> Love me? No, don't. You don't know who it is. Who's out there? I've got a gun in here. Now, who's out there? Let me in! Let me in! Some kid. Let me in! Please, let me in! Hey, old boy, what are you doing out here in the black of night? There's a werewolf on the loose. A werewolf? I think you better come inside. Honest, my dad's out there. What's your name, kid? Richard Bridgestone. But my dad, you got to help me find him. Easy now. Where do you live? We have a cabin a couple miles back. But my dad, he'll get attacked by the werewolf. He'll get torn to pieces. Well, quiet down now. Come on. Stop your crying. I, I just want to find my dad. He's probably trying to find you, too. Just because he gets a little mad at you doesn't mean he wants you running off in the middle of the night. You don't understand. We've got to tell someone. Please, we've got to find him. You've already told us. Look, drink this. It'll calm you down. I don't want it. I want to find my dad. Son, it's late at night. You can't go all over the forest looking for someone. Now, can you? Stay here. We'll take you home in the morning. Do you know what a werewolf is? Sure, kid. We go to the drive-ins all the time. Here, drink this milk. It'll put you to sleep. Yeah, just like another little boy I know is gonna take this blanket and sleep out in the car. Well, if you're not taking me home, I'm going by myself. I guess he's going home. And you're taking him. Okay. Come on, man. Let's go find your dad. Hey, wait. Aren't you going to take your gun? No, I think we better leave it here, just in case that werewolf comes while we're gone. Dad! Come on, kid. Forget it. Dad! Hey, look, kid, there's nobody around here. The old man's got to be out there looking for you. Now, why don't you just jump into bed, keep your door locked. You'll be all right. Hey, mister, can I go back to the trailer with you? Do like I said. There's nothing to be afraid of. Oh, please, mister, I'm scared to death. OK, kid, come on. Jenny, I'll sure be glad to see you. Don't make so much noise. You'll wake the house guest. Who's that coming, the house guest for tonight? I'm looking for my son. You must be Richie's father. Boy, am I glad to see you. Uh, we had a hell of a problem with a monster here all night. Dad! Oh, Richie. 
Oh. I saw it again last night. The werewolf. Oh, Richie. It's true, Dad. Hey, you look in worse shape than your kid. Oh, I've, I've been looking for him all night. Oh, does he run away from home all the time? He didn't mean to run away. Like to stay for breakfast? Oh, we have to get along, but thank you very much for looking after him. Kids, is that really what you want? Nope. I want a little girl. an arm, that's all the same guy. What about the car that went over the cliff? Burned to a crisp. The man and his wife. Hey, Sheriff. What's going on, Sheriff? Just a bad accident, Mr. Duncan. People just don't know how to drive these mountains, do they? I'm going to get some pictures. I always carry this camera just in case. Duncan. You know what I mean? Duncan. Duncan, your car's blocking traffic. If you don't get it out of here, I'll write you a ticket. Just a couple of pictures, Sheriff. A couple of pictures will cost you $30 and a full day in court. Here's the rest of him. Well, you had a good look. Now get the hell out of here. Something must have come down out of the hills. A puma, bear, wolves, maybe.
Hello, Sheriff. Glad to see you're all right. Certainly, Sheriff. Why shouldn't I be? Well, ever since the night you were attacked, we've been having some strange things going on up here. Like what? Last night, two people in the trailer had a terrible accident. The trailer went over a cliff. Well, what's so strange about that? Only this. When we found it this morning, one of the victim's head was missing. God, that's awful. Just like the truck driver. Truck driver? Yeah, ripped to shreds. As though some wild animal had just got to him. What is it? Whatever it is, we're making a thorough search of the area. There's no telling where this thing could be hiding out. Mind if I look around? Hi, son. Hi. Look, Mr. Bridgestone, I'm getting some men together to try and track this thing down. I want you to join us. Well, I'm sorry, Sheriff, but we have to uh, get on home. We got a damn man-eater running around here, and you're sorry. Hmm. Wanted. In 1814, $500 for the head of any werewolf. Claims may be collected at any military base or outpost. Silver-coated ammunition available at most general stores. Ordered by the authority of the Secretary of Defense. I mean, really? I'm so glad those days are over. I mean... The head of any werewolf, my cousins. No, 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 no. Now that's horrifying. <laughs> Much like tonight's feature film, hey? The Boy Who Cried Werewolf. How about that so far? <laughs> I mean, imagine your own father turning into a werewolf and then coming after you. Hmm. <laughs> well, that's not too bad, is it? I mean, every kid loves to frolic in the woods and have a outing with their father. So he turns into a werewolf with little hair, little fangs. It, 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 it's just a little something that most kids only dream about, maybe in their nightmares, hmm? <laughs> well, my dear fiends, it is that time again here at Gargoyle Manor, the Monster Museum, the Toy Museum, for real monster lovers like you out there. I thought I would bring out some more of my wonderful collection, some new treasures that I got uh, acquired, that is, for exhibits in the museum not too long ago. In fact, here's one called The Face of the Screaming Werewolf. Now now this was a film and it was starring Lon Chaney Jr. Now you may remember it uh, a couple, uh, maybe last year, maybe last season, th that uh, you saw it here on Monster Movie Night. Well, anyway, this is a wonderful representation of Mr. Cheney from that movie. Uh, it, it's uh, very lifelike, and it's by Mego. Now, not only that, but we just got another werewolf uh action figure and it's called the flocked werewolf because well as you can see it is 
Well, it's furry. That's right, it's got fur from head to toe, just like a real werewolf. This is quite a find. It's a, a collector's edition, and I'm keeping him inside the, the, um, the case, inside this, uh, th that it came in, covered, so that the uh, fur will hopefully remain intact, <laughs> especially during the full moons. <laughs> I mean, it's so, look at those eyes and those fangs and claws. Ah, it takes me back to my youth. <laughs> Frolicking in the woods, romping with my fiends and cousins. <laughs> Howling at the moon. <clears throat> Yeah, those were the days. Mm -hmm. Well, anyway, these will be uh, exhibited or displayed here at mm, uh, Gargoyle Manor. And if you ever want to come by, just give us a ring or an email. And uh, we'd be happy to set you up with an appointment. Mm -hmm. So, my dear fiends, let's get back to The Boy Who Cried Werewolf. Unfortunately, I have an appointment first thing in the morning, or we could have stayed up and gone with the sheriff. No doubt he's looking for some sort of man-eating animal. It's not an animal, Dad. It's a werewolf. Richie, that is not possible. Don't you remember anything about last night? What do you mean? What happened last night? You took this bag into the basement. I don't know what you're talking about, Richie. Your imagination is running away with you again. What was in that bag? I didn't have time to look. I just covered it up so the sheriff wouldn't find it. Now, Richie, the sheriff and I went into the basement at exactly the same time, and there was no bag in there. All right, Dad, if you say so. How about dinner Friday night? The two of us? Richie! Tell me what happened. He's a monster, Mom. A real werewolf, but he doesn't remember it. I wasn't sure at first, but now I know. Honest. Now start in the beginning, okay? Well, I hooked this big fish, see? And then this werewolf comes out of the forest. The same kind of thing that attacked Dad, remember? Well, he ran after me. This, this truck went out of control. I hid, and, and then it ran out on the road, and, 
and these people in a car went over a cliff. It grabbed them. It started tearing them apart. It grabbed them by the head, Mom. It was a werewolf. I know it was. And all this time I was looking for Dad. I couldn't find him. Oh, it sounds like a nightmare, that <laughs> No, Mom, he is. I'm not a little kid anymore. It wasn't a nightmare. Richie, <laughs> you can't make up stories like that about your dad. No. Come on. Little boys are always seeing monsters, and it's it's easy to imagine that they're their parents. It's true. Every word! Become senior executive, I'll relieve you of the responsibility. Oh, I'll gladly accept. Well, what was the urgent phone call about? <sighs> oh, Robert, I'm sorry. It's just that we have a big problem with Richie. He's on that werewolf kick again. Did you drag me out here just to tell me that? I know you've heard it before, but this time he thinks it's you. Well, that is lunacy. Obviously. Can't you handle the boy anymore, Sandy? <sighs> it's beyond me. I've discussed it with Dr. Martirosian, and he thinks we ought to take it more seriously. He wants to see you. Are you saying that you believe I am a werewolf? Let's say, Mr. Bridgestone, that I believe the boy. After all, occult practice was merely a primitive form of psychiatry. You're crazy, Doctor, you know that? Well, <laughs> that's the point for discussion. But quite seriously, I'm convinced he believes you are a werewolf. He is either trying to give us a hard time, Doctor, or he's suffering from hallucinations. I don't think so. Something beyond that first experience has left Richard in a traumatic state. Furthermore, I believe it does involve you. Of course it involves me, Doctor. He saw me kill a man up there. And I'm trying very hard to live that down. No, it's something more horrible to him than that. What? You see, Mr. Bridgestone, when you take Richie up to the mountains, occasionally you run into a full moon. Occasionally, yes, but what has that got to do with it? In the case of werewolfism, the phenomenon is supposed to happen at times when the moon is full. In between those times, the person possessed thinks himself perfectly normal. If there's no memory, how does anyone know? Legend has it, Mr. Bridgestone, that the werewolf's index fingers become longer than the center fingers. What the hell is the matter with my fingers, then? The legend goes on to say that the longer a person is possessed, eventually his hands may stay deformed. A kind of mark of Satan. One can believe these things or not. Certainly, ancient civilizations had their share of devil worship and demon possession. And did believe in the occult. Well, I am not a believer in the occult. Maybe not. There's a little poem by an unknown author which phrases it quite succinctly. It goes like this. 
The hand of Satan shadows all, the touch of few with evil's call. Are you saying that you believe I'm touched with evil? Is that it? Well, I don't believe it. You may not believe it, Mr. Bridgestone. But your son does. <laughs> Richie, good God. We've got to help him, Mom. Maybe we could take him to some kind of doctor. He's infected, Mom. I read it in my book about werewolves. It says people can become werewolves by being bitten or scratched by another werewolf. You saw it, Mom, the bite on his arm. Remember? We've got to help him. Richie, this whole werewolf business is nonsense. No, it isn't, Mom. Dad's supposed to take me to the cabin in the morning, and I'm scared to go. Well, there's no need to be frightened, because I'm going to go with you. I don't think anyone should go up there. Dad needs a doctor. Then you need to get ready for dinner. Now scoot. Is all this? Surprise. I'm going with you. Ah, to quote our son, hooray. <laughs> Carrots? Vitamin A. Heaven knows what you two eat when you're up there alone. The body has other requirements. Man does not live by carrots alone. I'm only the cook this trip. But suppose we run into a big romantic moon up there. We will enjoy it from separate bedrooms. At least I will eat well. Go finish your newspaper while I finish. Mm. Is that everything? All except your tote bag. It's still on the hall table. Hey, I better leave some lights on.
glad I came along. I didn't realize these mountains were this beautiful. And the air, it's too much. Maybe everything just might be the way it used to be, eh, Rich? Oh, look, Rich, there's that commune we saw. And I, I promised Rich we'd stop. Peace and contentment. Now listen. The earth, our mother, gives us love. But there is evil everywhere. And the end of man is coming. And therefore, the end of the planet. Done in by evil. Tell it, lover. And there is evil here. Right now. We're gonna rip it off, brothers, right? Rip it off. Rip it off, brothers! Rip it off! Join us, brothers. Well, no, we just stopped to watch. Oh, no. Something made you stop here. Amen. You've come to be saved. And saved you shall be. This is a Jesus encampment. And these, these are his people. Make way for a pentagram. Oh, God. God. This is not a black mass. No blood of newborn babies! No sacrifices! We want to keep the fallen angel out! I want a pitching session with you, God! I want to find the truth! And these people want to find it, too! We're going to cast out evil, cast it back to Satan! Love God. Of course, everybody loves God. If you love God, then step into the circle, brother. For it protects you from the devil. Now get out and get off. 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 We might as well get out and get off. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. Come along, brother. We're going to have a prayer meeting in this circle. We're going to fill this pentagram with love. What shields us from Satan? Surely there's nothing of the devil here in these beautiful mountains of God. It's only a demon of hell he cannot enter. But if he or she is pulled in, the evil possessing that person will be forced out. Enter. Enter. Thank you for the invitation, but we have to leave. Maybe some other time. We're all children of the universe. All. And we're all his family. Amen. Now, gentlemen, this little masterpiece will be served in the living room. Beef stroganoff, marinara salad, and now this, Sandy, you are sensational. <sighs> and I had forgotten you could even cook. Well, how could I miss? Fireplace, candles. There's even a full moon out there.
Don't you want your dessert, Richie? It's your favorite. <laughs> He's more upset than ever. Maybe the best thing would be for us to get back together again. I don't mean just for Richie. I, I can't tell you how lonely I've been. There must be some way of working this thing out for ourselves. Just go till morning. Be ashamed to mess up that third bedroom. I'll go check on Richie. Listen, Richie, I want you to help me. I can feel it. R Richie, I want you to lock me in here. And no matter what you hear or what I might say, don't let me out. I think we should tell Mom. No, please, Richie, please, just do as I say. Dad, are you sure? Oh, yes, Richie. I'm sure. Oh, Richie. If I should ever hurt you, would you uh, hurt me, I mean? I don't know, Richie, what I do to you or anyone else when I'm like that. Oh, please, lock me in. And don't let that thing out. Huh? Hurry, Richie. Hurry. Lock it. Lock it. Richie? Where's your father? Inside. I've locked him in. Oh, Richie. Mom, no! No, Mom, please! Richie, stop it. Mom, please come back! What's going on in there? What's it's, all this noise? It's Dad, he's away! Yeah. Richie, I'm sick and tired of all this nonsense. Mom, please, no!
work of righteousness shall be peace, and the effect of righteousness, quietness, and assurance forever. And my people shall dwell in a peaceable habitation, and in sure dwellings, in quiet resting places. When it shall hail coming down on the forest, and the city shall be low, in a low place. Blessed are ye that sow beside all waters, that send forth thither the feet of the ox and the ass. The indignation of the Lord is upon all nations, and his fury upon all their armies. He hath utterly destroyed them. He hath delivered them to the slaughter. Yeah. Oh, that's good, man. Well, come back to bed, why don't you? You act like you're beginning to believe all that stuff. Of course I believe it. It's the Bible. Come off it. Hey. A demon is coming to test us. I'm nuts. There's nothing coming. Awaken! Awaken! In the name of Jesus, awaken! On your feet, brothers. On your feet. Come to the cross. Meeting time. Meeting time. I'm going to preach on the blood. A demon is coming to test us. Sent by Satan. Satan. Tempt us, torture us, guilt and shame. Give us this demon and let us exercise it. Let us exercise it. <laughs> Satan, man wrecks and ravages and calls the devil, but unlike beasts and unlike angels, man can cry and confess and repent and change and begin again. Give the devil hell! <laughs> Ah. 
What is it? What do you want? God is what I say, and God is what help there is. Exercise and beat this thing. Beat this thing. Kill it. Kill it. Break it out! Break it out! Rip it off! Rip it off! For Christ's sake! I want hell. Say it! Praise God in the name of Jesus! Oh, oh out of sight, lover! Oh, out of sight, hell! We're gonna go to town and tell somebody about this. Aha! On guard! Aha! Touche! Aha! Touche! Aha! Yeah, Perry thrust! Pe ha ha! Ha ha! Yeah! Ha! Well, hello everyone and greetings, greetings! Ha ha! I'm just doing a little exercise with my fiend here. We, we love to get in a little uh, dueling every once in a while to keep our, our sabers sharp. And, and of course, just in case we have to run up on any of those pesky monster hunters of any kind, we need to make sure our, our rusty old swords and our rusty old sword arms aren't that rusty at all. We need to grease them up every once in a while. <laughs> so, you know, it's always great great to have hobbies, don't you think? <laughs> Especially when one needs to protect themselves in this day and age of, uh, well, peace and prosperity as it was. <laughs> well, at least for most people and some monsters, not all, but well, anyway, it's fun. It's a, it's a fun type of uh, activity. So I'll get back to it. You get back to the film, all right? <laughs> Yeah, that's right. Ah, huh, yeah. Oh, whoa, whoa, wow. Yeah. Ah. Find anything? Not a thing. Well, it could have been a large wolf or a mountain lion. Searching for food. More than likely. Just what did you see, Mrs. Bridgestone? I really can't describe it to you. It was too dark. Oh, I can tell you, Sheriff. It's my dad. It's a werewolf. Now, look, you pull yourself together, boy. Just hope we get it before it gets your dad. Bill, you and Jim stay here and look out after Mrs. Bridgestone. Now, there's nothing to be afraid of. I'm not afraid. I'm just worried about my husband. You don't understand. He's the werewolf. Come on, Ed. It was an exorcism worthy of a Jesuit. What was it? What's going on about this thing here? Quiet down! Pull it! You heard the sheriff? Okay. What are you people on? You smoking pot or shooting up or what? We're not on anything, Sheriff. We get our highs off of God. Hallelujah. Say it again. Hallelujah, brother. Hallelujah. The world is full of evil. We cast that old Satan back to hell where he belongs. Look, I'm getting sick and tired of your double talking. I want a straight answer. Could it have been a man? It was sent to us, brothers, and we all saw it as a man. But it was a beast. Did you get a good look at it? Could you identify it? Me? Identify the hand of Satan? <laughs> Could you identify a black cat in the dark alley? You tell him, lover. Well, are we going to sit around and let an animal chew everybody up in town? No. 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 We've got to protect our family. That's right. That's right. Come on. What are you going to do about it, Sheriff? I know what I'm going to do. Now I'm going to tell you what you're going to do. You're gonna get the hell out of here, go on home, and get off my back. All of you! Oh. Everything all right? Yeah. 
Thank God that lady's finally getting some sleep. to the sheriff. Yeah. Mrs. Bridgestone, you and your son come with us. Doug. Why in hell didn't you shoot it in the first place? Guns, brother, have a certain association with the bloody side of things. We just want our cross. Amen. All right, get back. Get the man through. Take your group around through the Pine Lake area. I'll comb the woods around High Ridge. That's how we got that bear last year. Right. All right, boys, let's go. Sweet, stay close. Let's go. And I'll take a prayer book and read the services for the burial of the dead. Do me a favor. You and that freaky dame go back to that damn camp of yours with the rest of your freaks and stay there. I'm gonna go in one better take my people to greener pastures. Why, lover, I kind of like it up here. Uh, after that little number last night, I'm not going to try for an encore. Give over, Monica. Oh, well, let's go with him, Mom. There's no telling what those people would do to him. Oh, Richie. Well, if it isn't Dad, then where is he? You don't know. Nobody knows. He's not at the house, and he's not here. Then where is he? He picked you up, Mom. Can an animal carry a human being? Well, can he? OK, son. We'll go along.
Come on. I thought I told you to cover the lake area. Find anything, Sheriff? There's nothing here. Ah, but there is something here, Sheriff. Yeah, I know. God. That's it. It's my dad. Nonsense, boy. It's a big gray, a timber wolf. Probably you've been hurt. Check your guns. If you see him, put him out of his misery. Richie, come back here. Stop that boy. You gotta get into this. Do you think I could do it again? Oh, you did pretty good last night. Yeah. Oh, it's wild. Let's go. Come on, we're going back. Oh, oh,
Is there a dry eye in the house, my dear fiends? I mean, really, shooting that poor little boy's father down like a dog, excuse me, my dear fiend, uh, down like a wolf, uh, right in front of him. So what? He was, you know, they might could have reversed the situation for him, or else they might could have learned to have lived with it. But of course, I think he got the last laugh on everyone. I mean, did you notice that he bit his son at the end of the movie? <laughs> I think maybe they were uh, thinking about having an, a sequel, perhaps called I Was a Teenage Werewolf, <laughs> or, uh, or, or The Werewolf Who Cried Boy. <laughs> anyway... What a wonderful film. I enjoy all my monstrous cousins, whether they be vampires, witches, va uh, werewolves, or ghouls, or zombies, or any other monster that uh, you could think of, or maybe you might even not think of. The imagination can go wild in the world of monsters, <laughs> as well it may always shall do. <laughs> anyway, this film I think I will rate with my little rubber duckies, the Dracula, Vampire, and uh, Zombie Ducky. How many should do you think we should rate it? One, two, or three? Huh? I think we shall rate this one a three. So there's one, two, three duckies for you and you and you. <laughs> and for this film. <laughs> anyway, my dear fiends, I hope you enjoyed it. As we always enjoy having you visit. <laughs> so, until next time, as always, keep screaming. <laughs>